So for our part number three, we're going to talk about some of the AGPM concepts. Concepts that are important to understand how the archive works, how you decide which group policies you want to put in the archive as being managed or controlled by AGPM, um, how the templates uh, work, how the recycler bin behaves. And so let's have a look at that. So once we're back at our AGPM, we're still logged on as Kurt. Kurt, as you know, is one of the AGPM admins because of his group membership uh, through this specific AGPM admins uh, security group. And so uh, what we're going to do for Kurt is we're going to have him uh, select which group policies from production he would like to now control through um, advanced group policy management. Now, for that reason, you see some of the uh, specific tabs here, from control to uncontrolled. Controlled is what today is found in the archive, and in this case, that's not a lot. Uncontrolled, on the other hand, is what is existing in production uh, so far, and which is, of course, uncontrolled by AGPM. So, if you now want to take control of these policies, it's as simple as selecting them, all or a very specific the ones uh, of interest then you're going to right click on them and decide to take control of them so let's give it a comment And so now he's now really copying those into the uh, archive. Uh, I'm hoping you remember the archive. We located that in the program data folder, program data folder, Microsoft, and then you actually find AGPM. And as you noticed, have you noticed how it's actually building up uh, these uh, policies as we speak? So six have been successfully completed, moved away from uncontrolled into controlled now including uh, the folder redirection that makes up seven so you actually do find indeed uh, seven uh, items in here so that's actually representing the archive and so from this minute on they're now under control of AGPM the other ones they stay in production we don't touch them we don't manage them through AGPM now Imagine that I would like to take away again one of these um, group policies and no longer have them controlled by uh, the advanced group policy management console. Uh, actually, it's as simple as deciding which policy I would like. So let's take the AGPM itself. Let's delete this one from the archive or from production or both actually. So in this case, we would remove it only from the archive, not from production. And let's actually go ahead with that. And control. Or let's call that back to the uncontrolled state. So it's now moved away from uh, the archive. But this actually makes me point out something else. So he's back over here, but also notice that in my recycler bin, since I've actually deleted it from the archive, I can now even find it in there. So what does this actually allow me? This allows me to bring this version of the group policy that I've actually deleted from the archive. It allows me to restore it or to really destroy it and make it disappear in, in completely. So the recycler bin, quite straightforward. Uh, in this case, it's the version uh, that I've actually built uh, just a second or um, deleted uh, just a second ago. If you're wondering about what are the settings that live inside, you can at all times have a look at the settings HTML report, which will build up uh, exactly what lives in this group policy object. Again, it is looking at the archive, but in the recycler bin of the archive, you could say. So this would give me my HTML report, 
I'm going to allow this uh, content to be visible. And there you go. Indeed, some of the settings that I've talked about. Okay. So, another thing that's been added in this version 3 re re relating to the recycler bin is that from the minute I delete a specific policy, it's going to still keep it in the recycler bin. Uh, for what time? Well, this is actually what you can choose. Now, it's not defined in a time uh, matter, it's actually defined in the uh, number of versions. So I could decide to only keep the uh, last 25 versions of that specific of uh, a group policy object so that it can go back uh, 25 versions of each policy that has been controlled uh, by AGPM. So that is actually under here. What else do we see? To come back to the control, we've talked about that. The uncontrolled, we've talked about that as well. The pending. The pending actually uh, tab will have some objects inside it. Once we request for the creation of a group policy, or well, we are not privileged to create a group policy. And so at that time, it will go into a pending state because uh, someone else has to approve the creation of the group policy. And so this pending tab is the place where you would go as an administrator to approve maybe the creation, maybe the editing, or maybe the deployment of a group policy. So it's typically the place where you're going to go to uh, right-click and approve a specific operation on a group policy object. The templates, on the other hand, is, um, well, similar like what you have in GPMC. Let's say we have this um, domain security policy and the settings that are in there, you are convinced those are great settings to uh, start with for any server uh, in your domain. And so I can actually decide to build any further server policy based on this policy as a kind of a template, as a basis uh, for the future. And so I can decide to actually uh, save this uh, specific group policy object as a template. I'll call this my server, my base uh, server security. Okay, and so it's now being copied as a template. As a template that will appear once I would actually create a new group policy uh, through uh, AGPM. And it will request me if I want to actually create a clean new group policy or a new group policy based on a template such as the base security and uh, service security. 